You can I eat have- like a, a lot of human shit right now and your body's like cool with it? Yeah, and I'm, and then I just shit Whoa. it out. And that is that is that's even more erotic to me is like, I'm consuming this person's waste and then it's filtering and then coming out of me. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at our email, oplpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and if you want to join our Patreon community, head over to patreon.com slash OPL show. You can join our Discord, chat with us, other patrons, and help us make uh, donations to different charities, different people, different families. That's what we're using the Patreon money for now. So if you want to be a part of that and help out, head over to patreon.com slash OPL show. Today, we are speaking with a woman who called into our anonymous hotline and left a voicemail. After we heard this voicemail, we had to reach out to learn more about this story. In her voicemail, she explained that her fiance has no idea that she is a critically acclaimed scat porn actress and that she does scat with people all over the world. And as she put it in her voicemail, he does not know that I like to play with and eat poop for a living. So we're extremely interested in learning more about how she lives this double life. And as always, we've got the guests on the line. Thanks so much for being on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So to kick things off, uh, can we just get a definition of scat and what it means to be a scat porn actress? Uh, Yeah. So basically scat is shit or poop. And um, it involves either playing with, smearing, or eating poop, um, depending on on your preference. Um, But yeah, it it centers around basically shit. So how does one come to know that they're like, you know what, I'm going to be a (laughs) scat star? Well, I've been into scat. Well, I've been watching scat porn since I was about 15 years old. And I, I, I recognize like I went through like a bunch of porn phases and scat was always like the one that stuck. So I found a partner when I was in my early 20s to do it with for my first time. And after that, I was hooked. So um, fast forward a few years, I basically decided, um, you know, why not try to monetize it? Um, because I was I was working a dead end job, I wasn't uh, fulfilled, and um, it's something that I enjoy doing. So I just started posting clips of myself um, shitting uh, on the internet, and it just. Uh, evolved from there. Basically, I started um, gaining like a fan base, etc. And um, yeah, I've been doing it for about five years now. Wow. wow. I'm uh, so I'm a little interested in this origin story then. And we have spoken to someone on the show with a poop fetish. So I think. Yeah, I saw intri- that. I, I listened to that episode. <laughs> yeah. And that that was mind blowing. Um, but I guess for you, you kind of have taken it to the next level and now you're a performer but you said you kind of found a partner and there was that very first time that you got hooked uh can you tell us about that first time like what did you do exactly i posted on um a website uh i don't know if you know guys know it's a website called fet life it's like basically for people with um fetishes we've definitely heard a lot of guests mention that in the past yeah <laughs> I found a guy who was, um, who was interested in, he said he'd had experience with it. So I basically was, you know, like, let's go. And we met up at a hotel, um, and we played with each other's shit. And that was the first time I actually ate it. And I will admit, I got a little bit sick afterwards. Like my stomach couldn't handle it, but it was the most Incre- it was the mo- like an incredibly erotic time like like it still sticks with me I had probably one of the best times of my life with that man um you know finally being able to experience a fetish that I had only seen online for several years at that point and 
I knew at that time that it was something that I liked to do. Um, so yeah. I gotta be honest with you. So I, I mean, I'm not, this isn't a fetish for me. I'm not really into it, but the way that you're talking about it right now, it sounds magical. <laughs> it, 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 it is like, honestly, it is one of the most erotic things to me because it is like, for example, like everybody shits like no matter how beautiful no matter how rich no matter how you know whatever you are on the socioeconomic scale everybody has to eliminate waste and it's the great common denominator of our time and to see people like to see someone do that for me personally is just incredibly erotic because it's like you're after you see somebody shit, like there's nothing else that you can hide. It is, it is absolutely just beautiful and magical to me. And I, I don't know if it's because I was exposed to it so young, but honestly, I think, I think if I really didn't like it, I wouldn't be doing this. Like, I mean, it's, it's shit, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> it is yeah. shit. It is shit. Yeah, <laughs> it is for sure. Shit. And I, I, is that what it is? Like, is there an aspect to it? That's like, like this is wrong and it's like like gross so it's like even better kind of thing. Yes, definitely. I think the because it is so taboo, um it makes the turn on even better. I truly just enjoy the stinkiness, the the taboo aspect of it and I really feel as if um when I'm doing it like it be kind of it, uh, it kind of takes me on another plane, if that makes sense. Like I like it's so highly erotic. It's like one of the only things that really just turns me on to a major extent. Like I, I, I enjoy and do practice, you know, just regular vanilla sex. I, you know, that's fine with me. But I truly, truly enjoy uh, sex with like scat sex. I, I it's it's. You need it, that shit, is what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is truly like, even like Joe, Joe, magical was a great word to describe it. Like the way you're talking about this, it really, it does make me realize like this is, it's definitely one of the most taboo things. So I can understand how erotic that must make it. And it does just feel like one of the highest levels of just like vulnerability. And like you were saying, like to strip down the facade of any, like any walls that we put up as humans of like what we wear or how we present ourselves. Like, yeah, to just see someone shit is it's just like animalistic almost. It's just like a person in their most natural form. Exactly. Uh, very elegant way of describing all this, but I do yeah, need the to word focus. erotic came up a few times and I'm like, yeah. I haven't really heard that <laughs> word. Like someone used that word, like des describing any sort of sex in a while, but you're, we're talking about yeah. eating, eating shit. And you're like, it was so fire and erotic. I was like, wow. Like, but I do want to focus on the eating portion because that conversation that we did have with someone who had a poop fetish, they did not eat it. Um, that, is like hitting a new level within an already crazy level of playing with shit. So I really hope my neighbors can't hear me right now. I'm like <laughs> screaming. Um, I do wonder that sometimes there's like a three year old girl that lives next door. Um, but anyway, so to eat it, what was that something that you kind of had to work up to or were you always interested in eating it? I, I was always interested in eating it. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but there's there was a very famous um, porn, a scat porn actress. Her name was Veronica Moser. Um, she was from Austria or Germany, I believe. And she had a 40, I would say 30 or 40 year scat porn career. And she explained in a video um, how she worked her way up to eating shit. And basically she would shit in a bowl every day and eat her turds. And then she worked up to eating other people's shit. And she said it took basically a full year before she was able to like do it and like keep it down and stuff. But she said every time she did it, it was so erotic. So when I first started, I started with small quantities like, for example, I would stick my finger in like my partner's ass and, you know, lick the shit off. But I, um, the first time I actually like ate, I did, I did get sick, but honestly, after that, I just kept, 
I just kept practicing. And I know that sounds like crazy, but <laughs> I, I, I just, it, it turned me on so much. And I also, I've also eaten my own. And as wow. long, as long as the person that you're eating from is healthy, like they don't have any um, diseases or anything, you're usually fine. But like, you're, you know, your body's natural uh, response for something like that a lot of times is to reject it. But I've gotten to the point where I can eat no problem, like a lot. Um, you can I eat have, like a, a lot of human shit right now and your body's like cool with it? Yeah. And I'm, and then I just shit Whoa. it out. And that's, that is, that's even more erotic to me is like I'm consuming this person's waste and then it's filtering and then coming out of me. Don't tell me you double dip and eat it again. Do so you're, you? you're no, shitting, no, you're, you're shitting that, someone else's shit. Yeah, I'm shitting. That's crazy to think about. So basically, um, no, I do. I usually don't double dip, <laughs> but I really um, like it, it's just it's the act of eating someone's waste for me is just like it's like I'm consuming them and it just turns me on. And so I felt like, why not um, monetize it? You know, like don't yeah. eat shit. Don't don't eat shit for free. But yeah. <laughs> Listen, Holy. if I was eating shit, I'd, I'd be getting paid for it too. So I, 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 get, I get that part of this. Um, also, what you, you just described something that I think we've heard before on a, on a different episode where someone talked about um, blood, mm -hmm. where it was kind of like consuming someone's blood was like the mm -hmm. same thing that you're talking about, where it feels like you're like consuming them in a way or, yeah. you know, mm. it's, I don't know, I guess sort of ritualistic. And, and I, don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is, we're talking about, Shit though, but like what, what you what you what you describe though is that you so you do you just like eat your own shit for no reason like not for an erotic reason but just because you're like well I just enjoy this now just just for the calories yeah. no I would say it I do it when I'm in the mood like hmm. I don't do it like every day like you know when I take my morning poop I don't like stick my hand under there and and eat some. I have to like, I have to be in the mood. I have to, um, I have to make sure I'm, you know, I'm ready to clean because I like to smear it on me and stuff. So that's the thing that sucks is like, you know, I have to make sure um, that I'm, I'm able to clean it up and, you know, freshen my breath, brush my teeth. And that's the other thing is like when you eat shit um, that people don't tell you, because I'm like obsessed. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm obsessed with oral hygiene. <laughs> So <laughs> you have to, you, you, sh I, I, I told my dentist that I do this and <gasps> he's, he said that, um, if I do it, I should wait three hours minimum before brushing my teeth because brushing your teeth causes microscopic tears and the shit particles can get into that and oh. I could get like an infection. So he said, just use mouthwash and then brush your teeth later. That's a good tip. <laughs> wow. That also sounds like a tip that someone who eats shit would kind of know about. I, so I, th I think your I, dentist might be eating shit too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, but if he, I mean, you know, if he is, he could be one of my clients. Oh my go. God. I so I know, um, I know we're working our way up to kind of the career that you've created around this. Um, and the fact that your fiance has no idea about any of this, but a few more questions about the consumption of fecal matter first. Um, don't know why this came to mind. Do you ever use utensils? Yes, I Whoa. actually um, I actually made a video where um, I eat um, I eat shit like it's like so the guy that I was with, he like shits on a plate and I eat it with a knife and fork as if it's like fine dining. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, are you cutting this up or have you ever tried chopsticks? I'm, I'm chopping it up. I'm eating it. I'm tasting it. Um, he has uh, he has turds from uh, from the day before that he froze and then unfroze for me. And so, like, the texture and the flavor of that turd is different from the turd that he just shit on the plate. He and thought it out. He thought it yeah, out. Yeah, we yeah. did. We did a whole scene where it's like we're in a we're in a restaurant and we are um, we're you know it's like a, a Michelin star shit restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever season it? 
Do I ever what? Like, <laughs> like season it or like put like hot sauce on it or something? The only thing we've done is um, he, we, I dipped it in some, like I put a cracker in it once and then he also put it on sushi rice because we did like an omakase scene. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't believe Oma- we're having this conversation. Omakase? Shit, shit omakase. <laughs> yes, shit omakase. So we had each, we had different pairings of different things covered in, sh- in his shit. Is there ever piss? Yeah, I drink piss. Oh, God. It's like with shit. If you're going to, like, piss is nothing when you're. I mean, yeah, that's got to be a layup after you go to shit. I mean, you're having a fine dining <laughs> restaurant with so, shit. I assume so, there's piss. Yeah. Like a piss pairing for each meal. A piss, and a piss mixed with the sake. Oh, wow. You piss in sake and then drink that and then yes. eat shit. Yes. Is there anything else in this oh, meal? Uh, no, I don't do like blood or anything, but I mean, you know, like I can't be, I can't. Yeah. Uh... Blood would be too much. <laughs> yeah. I am curious too. Do you, yeah, right. Blood's crossing the line here. Um, <laughs> do you, do you remember the best shit that you've ever eaten? And was it your own or someone else's? No, I remember the best shit I ever ate. It was last year. It was this woman that I had been um, connecting with online. And we ended up meeting up in her city. And I, I so here's a, a disclaimer. I'm very heterosexual and I only like to eat shit from men, but I was so intrigued by her because she was just like me. Like she had had a scat fetish and since her early teens, she was just really into it. So I was like, look, like let's hang out. So she flew me out and we hung out for the first few days. And then the last day, we hooked up and she shit in my mouth and it was like delicious. Like, I don't know what she did, but it was like very sweet. Um, it hardly had any smell. She's like one of those West coast vegans. So maybe that's why, but, uh, (laughs) but, um, it was, it was, it was absolutely delicious to this day. I still think about it and replicate it. I honestly don't like eating my own shit currently because I have a really shitty diet right now. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, diet. Yeah, you do have a shitty diet, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, she's. I mean, you're eating <laughs> shit for God's sake. Uh, all right. I don't know how many people are still watching or listening to this, but uh, <laughs> so I think I think we. Wait, got, hold on. Sorry, I just wanted to cut you off. Oh, there's quick. more. Just, there's more questions about. Well, this. just because she had said something that I didn't even realize, you said this woman shit in your mouth, so this came oh. straight. It came straight from the source. Straight from the source. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even catch that. That is what I love. Like, I love to just have it like straight from the source because once it it, it touches the air, like, you know, I mean, shit is already it's waste. Right. And it's already got bacteria. Like, I don't like there are people who ship shit via the postal service and they like like I've shipped my shit to people and there's people who've eaten it and it's like the like i send it next day air but sometimes it doesn't always work out and i've had people like eat my shit after it's been in the post the mail for like four days no i i I can't do that it has to be fresh that day or the previous day frozen or that's it i can't do it you're a shit snob now (laughs) i am (laughs) I'm going to use, oh my God, I'm going to use that. (laughs) It's like, it's just like going right under the like ice cream machine and just pulling it like not, no cups, no nothing. That is what I love. Like, I love seeing like, um, not to be like too, I mean, we're already talking about shit. So I'm like, yeah, we're we're, we're, we're past the point. (laughs) Yeah. I love seeing like, I love seeing an asshole just open up and like a nice, like full turd come out. Now I will say, in, in the vein of being a shit snob, I do not do diarrhea because if you have diarrhea, then you clearly, there's something going on with your digestive system and it is not, you know, that's not healthy and it increases the risk of, you know, disease, et cetera. So, um, I'm very, I'm very intentional with the shit that I eat. <laughs> 
Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And, and what are what are the diseases too? Like, do you do you know of any that you have to be like weary? Well, of? you definitely have to be very wary of hepatitis, um, and basically like any disease that a person has that can be passed along in like fecal matter, you can get. So you have to be just very careful um, with the partners that you choose and. Um, like, do you vet people for things like that? Like you guys share health history or something? Do, we do health history, STD screenings, et cetera. Um, and yeah, you have, you just have to be very careful. I mean, not every, you know, you can't be a hundred percent foolproof, but it is, um, you know, it's a risky, it's a risky lifestyle. I'll admit, um, yeah. I, I accidentally got shit. Um, so I did a whole a uh, smearing session about two and a half years ago where basically my from head to toe the guy I was with uh, he and I were just completely smeared in like three pounds of shit and um, I accidentally got some in my ear and I had a horrible horrible ear infection to the point where um, if I hadn't gone to the doctor when I did my eardrum would have ruptured Jesus. I know. Wow. And, and and to this day, I still have like, like I have to be very careful with that ear. Like when I wear like AirPods and stuff, cause it's, it, it'll start hurting. Like if I'm, if I'm not, you know, so I do not smear now, um, above my neck, but I do love, I just love just like rolling around and shit. I guess like a pig. Do pigs roll around and shit? Yeah. I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Wow. Well, you uh, almost lost an ear. That's that's why I know it's it's and and it's even crazier to think about because like that's how I know I really love the fetish because if I was just doing it for like money or <laughs> you know to please someone like after almost losing my fucking hearing I wouldn't be doing this but yeah. I it is something I I I I just love and you know what I've I've accepted it because it makes me happy. And the people that I play with are like, I've met some of my best friends in the scat community. It's a very small community, but it's a very welcoming community because we are continuously shunned because I get it. We're eating shit. Okay. Like (laughs) you're eating shit and you're almost losing an ear, but that's showbiz. (laughs) showbiz. Um, But that's actually a good segue because you're talking about the people that you're able to be open with and how much joy it brings you, which if you made anything clear, you've made it clear that you, you really do love this. And, but there's part of your life. You mentioned that you have a fiance, the person that you're about to marry that you love. They have no clue that you do this so how in the world are you juggling these two lives uh very poorly actually um I would say that it has started to wear on me because if he were to find out about this online persona I know he would be devastated and I feel very selfish for doing this um I mean I love him a lot but I really do feel like it's it's a shitty thing to do. <laughs> it's a shitty thing to do to him. And like there have been times where I've like gone out of town and I've had to lie and say like I'm going out of town for business. Like I have a regular I have a regular job in um uh, in tech, but Um, so he's, you know, he's like, okay, you know, going out of town is not a big deal, but it's usually to meet like, uh, scat clients or to film with other people. Um, like I said, the scat community is really small. So, um, a lot of us like meet up and film with each other around the country. Um, and I make my videos with a full mask on so that no one can see my face. But I mean, if like if you if he had, if he sees one of my videos, like obviously he's gonna know it's me because like right. he he knows my he knows my voice, he knows my mannerisms. So honestly, I think it's just because I'm lonely and I I'm it's it's nice having a fiance, it's nice having somebody to come home to. But my urges, I I am I'm never going to give up scat, and I mean. God, if I could find somebody who 
was into scat and you know we would live happily ever after right off into the sunset but it's it's much harder than you think <laughs> so no, I'm sure when but when you are like going out of town and meeting up with clients and stuff is it like sexual or is it just like shit oh it's usually sex and shit i mean Got you can't ha- you can't have one without the other so um yeah it's it's sex and shit because so, that that's what people like even though this is your business though i mean do you feel like you're being unfaithful and cheating on him essentially yeah i'm definitely being unfaithful i'm definitely cheating on him i'm definitely being a terrible partner to him and it's selfish because you know i love him and i want him to be around but i I I have this fetish that and and this love for scat and the community of people that I've met and that I film with and I just can't abandon them. Um, honestly, I'm just I'm just waiting. Like I I don't think we we are going to make it down the aisle. Like I I I wait. Oh, wow. I kind of wait every day with bated breath for some for him to call me and be like, hey, I. I saw your, your fiance on the internet eating shit. Like, (laughs) like, even though like I wear a mask, I feel like, I feel like that day is coming. So then I don't know if there's too personal a question, but like why continue forward and why get married? If there's this fear of being discovered, if you will kind of never tell him your secret, like, are you afraid of being in an unhappy marriage because you're with someone that you can't share this with? Yeah, I am afraid. Um, I mean, I love him a lot. Um, but like, I, I think it just stems from loneliness. Like we, we met and connected right before the pandemic started. And then we just, you know, like everything was shut down. So like we spent like 24 seven together. That's how we ended up getting engaged. But, you know, I had already been doing this for over five years and I just didn't have the heart to tell him, but I really do think it's because I just, I'm lonely and I want, I want somebody and, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a piece of shit for, for stringing him along, especially with what I do. Um, so I don't think we're going to make it down the aisle, but I don't think I'll be able to tell him. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. Yeah, it's a tough one to kind of to drop on somebody because it feels <laughs> yeah. like both of, like telling someone that you do this and then also breaking up with them separately are difficult things to do. But yeah. to drop both of those at the same time, pretty like, shitty. Telling him, <laughs> telling him, like, hey, I'm a scat porn actress, fairly popular, and I don't think we should be together. Like. The day that that happens, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. Is there a world where he accepts it though? Do you think if you were to just tell him everything, super transparent, super honest, could he possibly get behind this? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. (laughs) There's not a possibility that he's just like (laughs) fucking, he's like, check the freezer and he's been freezing shits for a year. Or even if he's not into it, like maybe he's like, hey, do your thing. This is your business. I've tried to like, I've, I've tested the waters with him. Like when we have sex, like he lets me peg him. So when That's pretty we, open-minded. Yeah. And so I stuck my finger in his ass and like it w- had his shit on it. And I like sucked my finger off and he, he seemed like he was turned on. And so then I asked him, can I give you a blow job while you sh- take a shit? And then, he, Oh, a blumpkin. Yeah. And then he like recoiled and he was like, Oh my God, no, that's gross. I was like, well, you just let me, uh, lick shit from your ass yesterday when I pegged you. He's like, well, that was different. I was mm. like, how is that different? But you know what? I can't question people's, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> You know, like a, what you're a bumpkin sounds with. like a fucking like a you know the the one hundred and one to what we're talking about here. Yeah. So if he's not cool with that, then I guess we can make an assumption. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's 
that's tough. And how do you go about, like, if, if you're so active in this community, is every time you go away, you just say it's a work trip? And what about the money that you make from this? How do you kind of, like, keep that to yourself or... I don't know. Like, how has he not caught on to like, oh, she might have something else going on? Well, I am very, (laughs) the money that I make from this goes towards paying my student loans until fucking Joe Biden decides to pay them off. (laughs) But I, (laughs) I really am just like, I use it to pay off like debts and stuff. So it's not like a huge, um, cause I, I spent my twenties getting into stupid fucking credit card debt and all my student loans, you know, cause you know, I'm a millennial. So, um, I was told the lie of go to a college and you'll have a great job. But, um, I, I, most of the money goes towards paying like debts and stuff. So it's not like, but I have used it. Like, um, like we went on a really fabulous vacation a few months ago that I used from a video that I made, uh, like 5k off. And, that video is probably one of my highest rated ones. It's basically like me and uh, this guy that I know. And we just like fill up a, um, do you know, like a kiddie pool. We fill up a kiddie pool with shit that we've saved over like a month. And we just like play in it and then like have sex in it and smear each other and stuff in it. So I took him on a vacation with that money. We had a great time. Okay. Um, How are you storing your shit, though? Oh, yeah, so, you, so basically you just, like, shit into, like, a bag or something, and then you put it in the freezer, and then when you're ready to use it, you unthaw it in uh, warm to lukewarm water, and then uh, it's ready to play. I mean, I mean, how are you personally doing this without your fiancé finding it? Right. Oh, we don't live together. Oh. Uh, yeah, we have separate residences because um, I don't like to live with anybody but my cat. So, um, and but he, he's never been at your apartment. Like, oh, I'm gonna go oh, get some he ice. Has, he has, but I, I hide it. I have a, um, I have a, I have a freezer, like a basement freezer, oh, okay. gotcha. where I store everything. And like, there's wow. no reason for him to go down there. And but it also has a lock on it, so just in case. Okay, you got uh, it locked up. Oh, you so said- this is like one of those dead body freezers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those big white ones, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. So you said you have a cat. You ever sneak into that litter box? Oh god. <laughs> no, and and here's the thing. There's a subset of our community that like they will eat dog turds, cat turds. They will go into porta potties or public bathrooms and oh. eat people's shit. That is very dangerous. Yeah. Like like there are some people who just they have to consume shit to the point where they are willing to put their health at risk. And I mean, I'm already putting my health at risk, you know, doing this with other people. There's no way I would fucking do it in a random bathroom or with an animal. Like, no, 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 we can't. You've you definitely made it clear like you have standards and you take like you understand the health risks. So you take that into consideration. I guess it's risky no matter what. But yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah, no, I think I said it before. I just never, I just never thought I'd have this conversation. I um, know. I, I never thought I would be in this. Like, I, I will never forget when I watched scat porn for the first time and I was like turned on and I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with me? But I, you know what? I eventually decided to accept it. And, and, and scat is becoming a lot more, I wouldn't say accepted, but I've found throughout my online communities, um, whether it's scat communities or people on Reddit or people on, you know, other social media platforms, like um, accepting it or, you know, recognizing at least that it exists. I mean, there's 300 million plus people in this country there, you know, and I have a steady supply of people that contact me who are into scat. So I, I, you know, there's a lot more people into it than you think. No. Yeah. And that's, I think important is like, even like for us to hear this, like this isn't going to change my mind at all. I have no interest. Like, obviously people have different fetishes are into different things, but I think, um, it's just that 
recognition of, you know, you telling your story, the community you're involved with. Um, and like you said, it from you kind of being on the inside, understanding this and seeing this community grow, it's just, it, you just can't deny that this exists, that there's a lot of people out there with this fetish practicing this. And uh, it's, it's different. Um, you know, like you had the girl on there who she doesn't eat it. She just, you know, likes to the, the feel of it, et cetera. Like there's different degrees to it. Some people just like pooping in their hand and smearing on their body or, or just pooping in their hand and looking at it. Um, you know, people who eat it, people who just smear. I mean, there's, there's so many different degrees to it, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, there's, there's a huge, I, I, I wouldn't say huge, but there's a much larger market for it than I would say in the past. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're, when you're smearing, like, I'm just thinking of like UTIs and stuff. Like, is that? Oh, never... so that is that is one thing that I don't do. I do not put shit in in my vagina or anywhere near my pussy, um, just because it's it's. I've I've had I had it done before, and I had like the UTI from hell. Like, I had to be yeah. on antibiotics for like three fucking weeks, and it's just not worth it. Like, there's there's scat porn actresses that will stuff their vaginas with shit and i just don't know how they do it what? like without getting any type of like uti or, or or infection or whatever because um you know the vagina is very delicate very delicate ph balance etc so but you know what i'm not gonna i don't judge um there's a a, a condom filled with shit in my freezer right now that I'm going to make a video um, later on today where I'm fucking myself with it. And it is, you know, I can't judge. <laughs> but when you're rolling around in a kiddie pool full of shit having sex, how do you prevent it from creeping inside? I usually wear, um, a, like, panties or a cover. Got it. Okay. Yeah, because I was figuring, you know, if shit gets in your vagina, you're a shoo-in for a UTI. Like, oh, that's yeah. I mean, I'm, it's, it's so the juxtaposition of like me being into scat, but also like, like I'm obsessed with like, like my vagina's health. Like I won't even let my fiance, like I, I scolded him last weekend because we were doing anal and he just wanted to just like wipe his dick with a towel and put it back in my pussy. And I was like, no, you need to wash your penis. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you, you don't want the UTIs, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that can happen. Um, wow. I, this is a lot of information that I'm going to have to digest. Uh, pick a different word than digest. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, we, we appreciate you coming on and being super cool about this also. I, I never thought that I'd be having this conversation. I can honestly say that this is probably one of the more, like, uh, taboo or just kind of out there episodes that we've ever done. So we appreciate you coming on and being completely honest and honestly living your truth, too. Thank I mean, you. I, I think... I I love there is something you guys. admirable about it that you're like, yo, oh, I know that I'm doing this and it's probably I should probably shouldn't be, but fuck it. Look, we all we all have to meet our maker one day and I wanna live a life like I I if I enjoy scat and um, you know, I've had a wonderful time with the community and my experiences and it makes me happy. So it makes me happy. Yeah, I will admit I'm trifling for hiding it from my fiance, but um, at the end of the day, we all need to do what makes us happy. And even if it's taboo like scat, just do you. Like, life is too fucking short. Our planet is fucking burning. And, you know, America's about to slide into fascism in about two years, maybe not even two years, six months. So fuck this shit and do what makes do what makes you happy. Go eat a handful of shit. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we're all going to meet our maker one day, and when I do, I want to eat his shit. Or that. You know what? I think uh, if there is an afterlife, I I would just like to just chill. <laughs> so you're giving up shit in the afterlife. <laughs> I'm giving up shit in the afterlife. I mean, I love, I love it, but I, I'm really like... 
I'm, I don't know. I just, I just want to do what makes me happy while I'm alive. Gotcha. Well, uh, listen, we, we, again, we appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, talking to us, you know, in the morning, by the way, everyone, it's 8 a.m. So, (laughs) (laughs) so yeah, that's how, that's how we're all starting our day, but for real, we we appreciate you coming on and and talking to us and and being super cool about it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, good luck with that video that you said you're going to film later. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Have a thanks. good one. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> what the hell? Yo, I. Uh, it's too early. It really I don't know is what's, too early. Yo, this season. We've recorded a couple episodes. I don't know when this one is coming out, but I can tell you right now, I am. I have been consistently floored the entire Absolutely. time. Like I, this is just like wow. This we are. I don't know. It's tough to say. We've had a lot of just honest guests, but I don't. I can't remember the last time we've so consistently had guests that are being so open and honest about just clearly some of the most taboo, Wh- yeah, controversial, wild. like wild shit just absolutely wild uh floored yeah like Feral. you said just <laughs> this is crazy this is yeah. wild. like i and listen fucking she, she sounds really fucking cool man and honestly <laughs> good for her to be like yo um you know i mean <laughs> but but she but you know the way that she was describing him just being like listen man, i mean yeah I, uh, it's not everything that she's not doing is super cool i'm not gonna eat any shit and also, you shouldn't be shitting, swapping shit and fucking other guys when you're engaged. But that that's aside, the, that I hope she <laughs> figures out because that's like that's the sad thing to hear. You want her to be happy, bro. You don't want to have to eat shit. I want both of them to be secret. happy, and I don't want them to like settle or just like I don't want this to just end up in a divorce or something like that. Like, come on. No, man. I want there to be a, a happy. You know, she finds a guy who just likes to roll around and. And shit, and every day is is shitty, you know? Yeah. That's what shitty. you want. And listen, again, I, we appreciate this girl being super cool about it um, and having a sense of humor because it's hard not to laugh when we're talking about this stuff, you know? Yeah, we're, yeah. And I do think, I do agree with what she's saying. I don't agree with the degree that she takes it, where <laughs> she says, like, you know, we live one life, you should do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. I agree with that, but I think that she's she's going, she's fucking living that one. She's grabbing life by the balls. Uh, so, but good for her because that's what makes her happy. She figured it out. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're still here, enjoy your breakfast. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah we might just it. be talking to each other right now. I know. People might have been out when she in. started talking about uh, sushi, shit sushi. So, but hey, man, like. That. Yeah, crazy season so far. Again, don't know. This could be the first episode. Who knows? But you're in for a ride regardless, and we're getting some insight that I just... I, we never thought we'd have conversations like to this degree, I think, on the show. No. So, wow. Wow. Just wow. I am... This is... I love this fucking show, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, uh, for anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, please hit us up. Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, let's continue to have some fire episodes like this one um, and just open people's minds to the possibilities that regular people that they know that have regular tech jobs are actually going home and eating plates of Michelin star shit, all right, and glasses of piss. Uh, so uh, hit us up, podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, also love that episode so crazy that just drinking straight piss is just gets brushed <laughs> over because that, over that doesn't even piss. matter. Yeah, uh, but yeah, follow us on Instagram at OPL Podcast, TikTok as well, and uh, yeah, if you want to join our Patreon community, help us raise that money monthly through Patreon to be able to donate to charities and different people, then head over to patreon.com/opl show, and that is all. See you guys next time. 